guys, welcome back to Mudline Motorsports. Uh, today we are, tonight rather, we're doing a, uh, replacing the clutch kit on a 2016 KX450F. Um, customer brought this bike in, basically just wanted to uh, know what this, what sound, what this sound was coming from his bike. And um, I took it for a spin. Um, quickly realized that he either has a bent valve or possibly a, a cracked piston or maybe just a, a cracked piston ring. It's basically making a pretty consistent screeching sound. Um, I, I'm almost con kind of concerned that it could be a crank bearing or something. So we are hoping for the best with this. Um, when I rode it, uh, it it still had power, it still fired up, but it is making a pretty ungodly noise um, from the motor. So put my ear up to the top end and it does sound like it is in the top end. So we're hoping that it's in this area here. Um, could be, uh, like I said, could be a vent, vent valve, but it's not really like a tap, 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 tap. Uh, if it like had jump time or, you know, something like that, I mean, it really sounds more like a more of like a screech so it sounds like there's i think I, I would assume there's somewhere there's some type of failure there's not proper lubrication maybe the customer hadn't changed its oil properly or maybe he hasn't been changing it after you know every uh few rods so um this is kind of a mystery but we're gonna be tearing down the whole motor or sorry i'm gonna be tearing down the, the top end of it um, but when I rode it, um, his clutch was slipping really, really bad. So I uh, went, I went ahead and um, told him to bring in the bike. I'm before I tear the whole thing down. I'm going to go ahead and knock out this clutch. Um, so we're going to get that on film tonight. I will, however, have a second video where I do the top end rebuild. So I will definitely post that up, and um, we'll figure out what's going on. I'm hoping it's just the top end, um, but. This, this, the sound just, uh, I'm not 100% sure. So again, hoping for the best there. Um, stay tuned for that video. Tonight we're just doing the clutch kit. I'm basically kind of stalling, waiting for the piston and rings to come in on this. I uh, went with the high, uh, high compression Wiseco piston. So um, it's taking a little longer for that to come in. Um, however, I do have the clutch pack, so I'm gonna be installing that tonight. Um, there's not a lot of content on the 2016, 2017, 2018 uh, KX450s replacing the clutch kit. So we're just going to be doing the friction plates, spacer plates, springs. We're going to be replacing those tonight. And um, I'm going to loop you guys in on every step of the process. Um, so, yeah, I didn't see a lot online. Figured I'd just make my own video. So hope this helps you guys out. The newer KX450Fs, they have, or just the KX450 actually, um, they have the hydraulic clutch. So there is some th some stuff out there on the hydraulic clutch. Um, however, there's a, I feel like there's a lot more people that have the, you know, even the 14, 15, 16, 17, uh, 16, 17, 18 model bikes, and they haven't got a newer bike yet. So this video is kind of intended for, for those uh, owners or simply anyone that just wants to see what this process is all about so we're going to get the clutch cover off we're going to get that or we're going to get the the rear brake lever off first because it blocks the clutch cover then we're going to get the clutch cover off and then we're going to start pulling that pressure plate off and uh and get to rolling on this thing so um stay tuned and then um we will uh, again have the top in on a second video so here we go all right, guys, so first I am going to fire up the bike um, simply because I got to drain the oil in either way. And I'd rather go ahead and let the motor warm up just a little bit and kind of loosen some of that oil up. Uh, if we're going to be doing a top end rebuild on this, um, it's going to be a good idea to try to get as much of that old oil out as possible. So I am going to go ahead and fire the bike up. I don't know if you'll notice the sound as much over the, you know, the, the phone recording, um, but you should definitely hear uh the the, the motor is just really not right valves are um are chattering just a little bit so you'll probably notice that and um let's see what happens all right
So yeah, so here's my thoughts on that sound. For one, there's my uh, same model bike. That's my personal KX um, 450. Um, same deal, basically exact same bike. I've just done probably $2,500 in aftermarket parts on it. However, despite that, yes, I know I have an exhaust on that and everything, that bike just sounds so much cleaner. Um, uh, fresh oil, you know, everything been properly taken care of. This one almost sounds like it's been running the same oil its entire life, maybe changed once or twice. Um, sounds like the valves needed serious adjustment. And I'm, I'll have to go back and look at the video, but if you really get close to the motor, you put ear to it, you can almost hear that little squeak, squeak, squeak. It's like a little scraping sound. Now, maybe there's a water pump failure there. Um, maybe possible just the, the oil pump isn't circulating, uh, you know, the oil all the way through the motor, but there is some dryness to the motor. So typically when I come across something like that, I'm just going to go ahead and rebuild the top end um, and inspect everything and make sure it's getting proper lubrication and everything. And so what I would do is I'd pull, you know, the tank off and everything. First thing we're going to do is lift that valve cover off and we're going to expose what's going on. Like I said, I plan on doing that once the piston's in, that way I can knock out the whole job same night. Um, and uh, if we find out that there's something, you know, going on with the water pump, um, you know, some type of issue with, um, you know, just oil circulation, then we'll definitely um, dive into deeper to that. But um, definitely needs a valve adjustment. And at, I think this bike has close to 80 hours. Um, it's going to be a good idea to go ahead and just go ahead and do the top end too. So um, either way, we'll save that for a second video. Um, now that we've kind of let it warm up a little bit, I am going to go ahead and drain this oil and then we will go ahead and pop that clutch cover off. That oil is absolutely terrible. No metal shavings, but it's very, very gray and metallic in color. So hopefully the little screeching sound that I'm hearing is not coming from a crank bearing or anything in the bottom end. Again, time will tell. Not to mention, there was a probably about a half a quart of oil in the motor. Um, I know I just ran it for a little bit, so I know there's some probably still up in the top end, but um, yeah. So, little concerned about that. All right, guys, so I um, already got, I spun the bike around so I could get all this on film for you. I already got the. All right, so I already got the um, rear brake uh, bolt out, so this just comes out. Throw that to the sun. You have a little spring here. Very, very simple. Spring and hook. And you can just lay that down to the sun. And then you're going to be taking these one, two, three, four, five, six perimeter bolts off of this. They're all eight millimeter. All right, so it's important to note too that this particular clutch cover does not have your, your regular clutch cover gasket. This is gonna have basically like a O-ring style gasket that goes all the way around. It is a good idea to replace these if they're worn. Um, looks like this is the first time this has ever been taken off. It's nice and seated and it still has a little bit of a lip on it. So we'll clean this up and uh, this will be good to, to reuse. I'm gonna go 
go ahead and pop off this um, oil oil filter cover, and we'll go ahead and pull that off as well. So guys, when when you do pull the oil filter out, um, what you want to look for is, um, of course, the color, and you also want to kind of look through these little fans just to see if you see any metallic flakes or anything. I'm not seeing any signs of metal shavings; just a lot of gray oil, real, 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 real metallic and gray in color. Uh, you know, black's one thing; the little bit of gray kind of indicates that there's a lot of wear going on. So that's probably just from not, um, not changing the oil like you should. So this is now trash. Um, a lot of times there will be like a spring, like a spring loaded system. I'm not seeing one in this one, which is surprising. Um, could have been lost. Um, it is pretty important to have that spring. However, you, it'll run without it, of course, but uh, I have the same year bike. Mine does have the spring. So just make sure when you, Decide to throw these um, throw these air, uh, oil filters away. That you're not throwing away the spring as well. Okay, um, and for t this is all gonna be okay. Never mind. So the spring was right here on the cap. So um, this one does have the spring. And what we're gonna do is just loose fit the bolts back in. Be putting a new oil filter in once I do the top end. So we're going to leave this really loose so I can remember to do that. Okay. Moving right along. So, next what you want to do is you want to remove this pressure plate. So you're going to have five 10 millimeter spring kind of loaded nuts here so when you pull these off or uh, bolts here so when you pull these off just be careful because you got a spring right behind them and you can go ahead and pop all these off all right guys so now we have the five pressure plate bolts out, the spring out, so you can just take a flathead and you can take the pressure plate off. All right, so there is a little washer in there that'll sit right there. You want to make sure that you hold on to that so it goes washer and then there's going to be your push rod that's in there that, that pushes up against that washer there so here's the little cap to the rod so when you pull in that clutch this basically pushes this pressure plate out and releases the clutch and then when you let go of the clutch it suck, kind of sucks back in causes those plates to grab and that's what gives you your drive so set this to the side we're gonna clean that up in a second pull out your rod slowly all right so both the pressure plate and the um, your uh, push rod all that looks pretty good I mean there's no warpage or uh, severe wear or anything on the actual pressure plate and typically you won't see that. I'm going to start pulling out these plates Alright, so I'm going to show you one of the stock burn up friction plates here 
there is absolutely hardly anything left there. Then you're gonna see a spacer plate. You're gonna see another friction plate. And all of these are just very, very worn down, which I mean, that's why it's engineered this way. So this takes the wear and you can replace this and be fine. You can see all the heat marks on the spacer right there, spacer plate. So these are definitely, definitely needed to replace these. Very easy to tell by riding. Basically, you'll know that your clutch is slipping when it's not disengaging until the very, very last release point. Either that or when you pull in the clutch, it's not engaging. Um, it's, it's basically still trying to roll on you. When you pull that clutch in, as soon as that clutch is activated, the, that it should almost feel like neutral. It should just, just you should just, the engine should just um, totally free up and just and just run i mean it's just gonna run you're not you're not getting any traction you're not pulling it's not grabbing when you feel like you're pulling your clutch in or you have to pull it all the way in before the bike will uh you know come come to a um you know a neutral position it's an indication that your your clutch is starting to go this one when you pull the clutch in it would it the clutch engaged and it kind of did its job but you really noticed it on the disengagement so when you went to release the, pl the, the clutch, that pressure plate wasn't, it was going out, but it, the, the friction, everything was still kind of uh, engaged and it wouldn't release right. So, uh, I can, so you can solve a lot of that with the clutch adjustment up by the clutch lever um, for a while, but eventually you got to replace this clutch pack. So that's the majority of them. These are just going right in the trash. And we still got another friction. All right, so next step, guys, is you want to inspect the basket. And I can go ahead and tell you that this basket is the perfect one to show you what it looks like when your basket is is very worn and honestly if it was up to me i'd replace the basket but we'll see what we can get. all right so each finger of this basket should be nice and smooth if it was brand new this you wouldn't see any ribs here all right, these rivets are indentions from the clutch plate, basically uh, the clutch plates slamming up against that basket. So as they start to wear, there's gonna be more play. And when there is more play, you're gonna have more kind of slap. So every time you, you, you know, you're in and out of the clutch, these right here are just kind of making a divot right into these fingers, okay? So you can really see it on that one how bad they are so do we replace the clutch basket it is a good idea to the um the inner spindle here doesn't look as bad they typically are, they, they're they stay pretty they pr stay pretty solid but this basket right here now whether you decide to go with a Hen henson clutch or recluse clutch doesn't really matter at the end of the day that's just preference but it the key is knowing when to replace these um clutch baskets this particular one uh, definitely needs to be replaced. Um, sometimes you can get away with, with filing them down um, just a little bit. The more you file them down, the more play it's gonna have. However, it is not going to hang up on you if it's got a slick surface. So what I'm gonna do is I'll be reaching out to the customer, disclosing this information with them, um, He's probably going to want to go the route of, you know, trying to save some money. So um, I'm going to give him a call. Um, and then we're going to either see if we're going to be replacing the entire basket or if we are going to be filing down. Um, he's probably going to just, you know, f file them down a little bit and get another, get another clutch kit out of it before replacing the basket. And that's fine. 
Um, I'll, I'll actually probably tell him that we can get away with it. I mean, they're not super deep. I could go over with a file and kind of straighten them out a little bit, and then we can go in with the new clutch kit, and it would make a world of difference. So um, we'll jump back on here once we get um, <clears throat> the decision on that. And we'll go ahead and get the filing if that's the route that we're going. All right, guys. So this customer decided that we're just going to file them down. Um, do I recommend it? No, but a, a clutch basket is expensive. So, um, you know, if you were just to do like a Henson clutch basket or something, I would imagine just the basket alone is going to run you anywhere from 120 to 180 maybe even $190. Um, you know, so the baskets are an expensive piece. Uh, the clutch kit itself is, uh, you know, it's, it does come out a good bit cheaper. So um, we're going to file the, this, the fingers down on this basket now and um, keep on rolling on this thing. But it's always a good idea to at least consider the fact that you can do a whole clutch kit. When I say entire clutch kit, I mean the basket, the pressure plate, the, in, the internal spindle there, the whole thing, I think you can do a whole clutch kit for probably around $250, $275. Um, I have to double check and see for this particular model, but um, we're going to keep on moving ahead and um, I'll go ahead and get to filing these down and I'll show you what it looks like uh, when I'm finished. All right, this one was my starting point here. I can tell because I can feel it. it's filed down. All these are filed. If you're wondering about the backside of these, um, they don't get, they, I mean, hardly any wear on these. Um, I basically filed the front sides down to the same degree of how the back sides are now. Back sides are a little smoother, actually. 
Um, so it's really just the front faces of each finger. Um, again, I mean, this is one way to save a little bit of money, but um, it is a good idea to do it. If you see the grooves in the fingers, then definitely want to um, give some attention to it. Just a little bit of filing, um, nothing major. And uh, definitely don't go too crazy on it because you don't you don't want the, the um, clutch plates to have too much play if uh, they're they're machined to have a certain amount of bit you know a certain amount of space in between each finger so it sits in there evenly so now that we're good there let's start installing some plates so take a look at this here, I've had these soaking for about, I'd say 45 minutes to an hour. Um, so all the spacers and then all of the friction plates down there. So um, I did want to show you guys what a new friction plate looks like. All right, so it's kind of what the new fibers look like. Nice little groove in between each of them and uh, there you go there's kind of a better image of how deep those grooves were the the old, the old ones were basically flat so another cool thing too is um with this model kx there's no on some clutch kits depending on what you're doing you know i did a yfz last week where it had um, a couple like like spring cushion plates and different types of plates and the first one that went on there was real real thin these are all the same thickness so you really can't mess up on these so I'm gonna go ahead and start installing these and uh, we'll keep the video rolling Good thing to remember is it's just friction, spacer, friction, spacer, friction, spacer, friction, spacer, until you're at the end of the clutch pack. So. All right, so guys, on the spacer plates, one will have more of a rounded beveled edge. One side will have a, a factory kind of sharper edge. It doesn't necessarily matter which way they go in, but you do want to keep them all the same. So typically what I do is I do all of the factory sharper edges to the inside. So make sure you do that. It does say, um, any clutch kit that you get, any, um, any directions that you read, um, they will indicate that. So, again, once you have a friction in, you put a spacer in, make sure the spacer is either rounded edge facing front or rounded edge facing back, and continue that same sequence. And then we'll just go another friction plate. Then another spacer plate. Sharp edge to the inside. Another friction.
All right, nice and solid there. All right, so next we have the push rod. Now, some of these push rods, depending on what type of machine you're working on, um, will have, you know, one side could be different than the other. On this particular KX450, they're identical to each other absolutely identical so this is gonna it's not gonna matter one way or the other how this goes in gonna go ahead and go in with the push rod clean up the pressure plate Seat your washer in there. All right, and you'll know that's in there when it sits nice and flat there. And then you can go ahead and put in your new springs. All right, guys, so um, each one of these, I've loosely kind of tightened down so they're just snug. And then I had to break out the torque wrench because these have to be tightened to nine Newton meters. So got the torque wrench here. We are about to snug them up. And um, I'll go ahead and get those locked on. And then we will put the clutch cover plate on, put the rear brake on, and we will be done. So I'll, I'll jump back on once this is finished up. Um, give me just a second. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, just to finalize everything, we tightened the clutch spring bolts down to 9 newton meters. We tightened the clutch cover bolts down to 12 newton meters. And um, put the rear brake lever on, and that's basically a wrap. Um, this is how you replace the clutch, uh, clutch kit on a 2016 to 2018 KX450F. Um, other than that, stay tuned for the top end rebuild. Um, we are going to be starting that next. So other than that, uh, thanks again for tuning in. You guys have a wonderful night. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Peace.